together. Everything is together. Is everything where you left it? It is. I just had to make sure that I look good on camera. Mm -hmm. I do mm -hmm. look good. Yeah. Why did I ever go wrong? As, as Tatiana was saying, choices. 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 The elevator to success is broken. Take the stick. Yeah. everyone Hi. welcome back to take the stairs I'm James Roberts I am Marcus D. Rocio and we have a special guest in the building Miss T. T. Siobhan, Siobhan Stewart yes, yes. <laughs> um, we wanted to have T. Siobhan here because she has an, an exciting development in her life right now she is making her Broadway debut in the Lightning Thief. You've already made your debut. You've already started previews. We have started previews. You've already started previews. <laughs> <laughs> so it's I'm not happened. personally Okay, okay, debut, okay. okay. Yes, yes, the, the show, show. The show has. <laughs> being a part of it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so, so Tisha Bond is standby for um, two? Yes. Two principal track um, roles in that show. Oh, yes, tracks. yes. So we're very excited to have her here today to talk about that experience and also just how she got here. What's going on? I met her at auditions over the past year or so, and she's been a wonderful energy in the room. I wouldn't have people here who weren't great energies. <laughs> because, like, if people know me in audition rooms, I'm just like... Auditioning is hard enough. Yeah. You need good energy yes. and good people. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm very, I'm very perceptive of when it's a cute energy and when I'm just like, I'm just going to, like, say hi and... <laughs> in my corner. Yes! People... <laughs> That's me. I'm sorry. That's me. That's what I do. So. Okay, I love you anyway. It's <laughs> a fair assessment. Yeah. yeah. There have been some auditions where I've, I've had to sit in the corner and I would see across the room there'd be some girl who literally would be sizing everybody up. We all know her. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But well, the ones well, you I mean, talk like, about people as they come into the room and you're like, I'm going to go over here so yes. I can get some different energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, because your outcome of your audition is not going to be my outcome. No. And no. You don't want. Not at, <laughs> Not at all. Well, um, it has been since June since we had a pre our last episode. Oh my goodness. Yes. Since June, just before the Tony Awards. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And so since then, um, you know, there's not been a lot to report, I'll be totally honest. Um, yeah, I think the break was for a couple of reasons. I know for me, over the summer, I was in a place where I'll be very very honest right now I didn't have a lot positive to say <laughs> about the business um, for the most part um, I didn't just want to be up here giving lots of negative energy I didn't want to be up here or, or that or just you know trying to make make it up you know manufacture positive energy when I didn't have it so I thought it was better to just kind of let it lay low until things came around and I was feeling a little bit better and that was you know, part of the reason it's been a minute since you've seen her from us. Um, what have you been up to, Marcus? <laughs> Ooh, where do I begin? <laughs> well, after we last broke, I went on a 90-day spiritual journey. I fasted from social media, hence the reason why for months, those of you who follow me didn't see me post anything. Um, I recently got back on like a month ago, and while I was, a, well, while I was away, apparently the whole world like kept turning and things just changed. Like I came back to all these, this news and great news. Like I see people in my life and in my circle who were doing things, leveling up and doing things that I didn't even know anything about or didn't realize. Um, myself personally, during the time I, I changed my diet, I stayed away from social media, I uh, grew my hair back. <laughs> As we can see, um, I went inward a lot, spent a lot of time alone, and just really reevaluated my life and what I want out of it. And I feel like the universe is now starting to manifest the things that I've wanted. I'm seeing the manifestations come to life, and um, yeah, that's what I see right now. Um, I feel like oh, I promised myself at the beginning of the year I would end this year as a different person. And I do feel like a completely different person than what I was when we came back at the beginning of 2019. Well, there we go. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You bloomed. I bloomed. Blossomed. 
I, I, my first <laughs> post when I got back on social media literally was, I am the caterpillar in the chrysalis stage, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and I'm about to burst out of the cocoon. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good. Transformation Station. Yes. yes. So, T. Siobhan. Next doll. <laughs> let's talk about you. Okay. Let's talk about you. And, like, um, I want to say, what do you want to tell us? But I'm, I'm on the, I should be more specific. I'm just like, what do you want to tell us? <laughs> um, what's been your journey to, to, you know, get to New York and get to the into the business and get to the <laughs> oh, it's such a long journey. Um, well, yeah. so I used to be mm -hmm. a college administrator. Wow. Yes. Okay. Um, I have a master's in education and human development. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And so I worked at GW, the George Washington University. Mm -hmm. Yes. And also Georgetown. Yes. Um, and I was assistant director of student engagement at Georgetown. And I left it in 2016 on mm -hmm. April 2nd. 2016. I moved to New York on April 11th of 2016, uh -huh. and um, it was very difficult because it was very hard leaving a steady paycheck, yes. retirement, yes. health all benefits, those all of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, living in D.C. with my friends and yeah. family, like my brother lives there, and just having like my safety net of people, and then coming to New York and being like, I don't have a job. Um, and you know, my mom was like, you're going to go be a hostess and you have three degrees? And I said, uh-huh. So, so that was a journey as well. I was not used to not having income. Absolutely. Um, and I remember the first day in my apartment in New York, I woke up and looked at the ceiling. And I was like, God, what the heck did I just do? Um, because it was just a really big change. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to navigate. I originally came up here to do voiceovers and um, background vocals. Mm -hmm. I hadn't even thought about theater because it was that yeah. really far-fetched, like, bucket list thing uh -huh. that's never going to happen, but we'll <laughs> keep it on the bucket list. Mm -hmm. um, and then I found navigating background vocals in New York versus L.A. was a very different situation. Mm -hmm. And um, voiceover, I was, you know, still, it's hard to do without having an agent or representation. Um, so trying to navigate that, and then my roommate was really telling me about how theater auditions happen, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I didn't even know I could like literally just go to an audition. Yeah. Like, I didn't know that's how that worked. Yes. <laughs> so, just show up. Yes, <laughs> just show up. Um, so I started that, and then um, kind of figuring out how to navigate the room, how to not be a singer in the room, and to be an actor in the room was big, just because I had focused so much on singing in my life, because mm -hmm. I hadn't really done theater since like high school. Um, in a real way, um, just because I had focused so much on voice. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I, also, I went to Spelman for undergrad, just to put that out there. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. that alma mater. Um, and so I did study voice there, but left the program because I didn't feel like I could do what I wanted and ended up just literally changing everything and leaving entertainment behind. Wow. Um, but it was one day in church in D.C., this woman named Sandra, who went to my church, and she heard me singing um, in the pews, and the young adults were singing at that time, and mm -hmm. she turned around to me, and she goes, so you need to be up there. <laughs> okay, and I literally Sandra. had, I was like, I don't know, you could hear me like that. <laughs> so that is really kind of what started me back mm -hmm. in music and back yeah. in entertainment and everything. That was so Sandra's the catalyst. Of Come on, Sandra. Sandra. Shout out to Sandra. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My mom is named Sandra, so I guess that's. Well, well shout out to Sandra for making it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sandra and Richard, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, so then I just really started um, figuring, navigating the audition scene and figuring out what I needed to do in the room to be authentic, to be great actor and so I got my first ship contract four months to the day um, after moving to New York and All I worked right. for Aida Cruises Come on. Um, and that was a really great experience learned a lot about myself on stage mm -hmm. um, in a whole different culture yes. because it's a German cruise brand so they're, mm -hmm. yes. they're a little different I love mm -hmm. them um, but um, they they experience entertainment differently Yes. Um, and so I did that, and then I got a, a contract doing um, Sister Act at Westchester Broadway. Yes. So that was my first oh, nice. like official like New York theater yes. um, contract, which was great. And I got my first set of EMC points. Yes. 
And then after that, I mean, I booked some other stuff, but I had conflicts with that contract, mm -hmm. and so I couldn't take it. And then I, I ended this. up, yeah, <laughs> I remember this where this I was like trying to decide. I remember I was this like, deliberation. Which one do I think do? I think I met you around that time. Yeah, and you were kind of in between which one you were gonna do. Yeah, because I yeah. got in a contract <laughs> for another audition that I completely crashed. <laughs> to be very honest, but I knew I was right for that show. Hey. Um, <laughs> and luckily, they did not take my crashing negatively. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I got the job and I felt really awful having to turn it down but Westchester offered me the opportunity to not only be ensemble but to do an understudy principal track mm -hmm. it was a longer contract so I got more EMC points and guaranteed EMC points the other one was a union theater but they don't participate in the EMC program mm -hmm. um, so that was you know I was trying to think of like professionally what makes the most sense right now mm -hmm. um, and so and then I got a couple of other contracts along the way but again conflicts I went into so funny thing about lying <laughs> I was not going to go to the audition guys oh. I'm not gonna go I did not think I was right for the show I read mm -hmm. the breakdowns and I was like I don't know I'm not usually this like angry teenager like yeah. you know, the girl next door really <laughs> you know type of thing and I didn't know if I and there was like the mom track and I was like I look so young mm -hmm. I don't usually play mom roles mm -hmm. even though I am very nurturing um, but um, my friend Jesse, who was actually the wig person for the off-Broadway run, okay. um, or the New York run, yeah. or the original New York run, I should yeah. say, um, she was like, you're totally right, I can totally see you being Clarice, like, I think you'd be amazing, and she was like, you definitely need to go to the audition, because I think you're right for the show. Mm -hmm. So I went, I didn't know what I was singing, I was listening to the soundtrack, I was like, I don't know, in my book matches this uh -huh. or whatever i chose my song i think 30 minutes before i went into the room <laughs> sometimes <laughs> um, some epa hey. thank you thank luckily i had emc point uh -huh. so i did get seen yes. mm -hmm. um and then got called back and just you know just went on that path and mm -hmm. got booked for the tour and then of course um got to take over Clarice's role for the last like, two and a half weeks of the tour. I think really I cool. knew that. Yes. Come on. <laughs> yeah. And so then I had to understudy uh -huh. Anna Beth also, so I had to learn that track okay. while on the road with pretty much no rehearsal. So, you know, very little mm -hmm. rehearsal while we got in Boston, but it was like an hour. Which <laughs> so, very little. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Wow. Um, so that was cool. And then, um, and then we found out the last week in Boston that the show was going to Broadway. And so that's yes. kind of what happened. And that's yes. the path to Broadway. Come on. Yeah. Very asked... non traditional. <laughs> yeah. But I love it. I love it. I love it. You, um, I do have to ask a question. Sure. Um, was there a, were there a few weeks when you were coming to auditions and you knew you were going to be on Broadway and just auditioning? Yes. You were being sneaky. I thought you were. However, I'm I was joking, being strategic. I know. Like, you got to do what you got to do. So we knew it was a limited run until January mm -hmm. 5th, so I was only auditioning <laughs> for things that were after January uh -huh. 5th. Yes. I'm joking. You know. Or like open-ended yeah, Broadway yeah, of course, stuff, because you never of know if they're actually hiring or not yeah. hiring, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, she had. But a, people would suggest, like, oh, I think you should go out for this show. And I'm like, oh, I can't. I think I'm going to be on. I have a conflict. <laughs> I was trying not to, like, blatantly lie of to my course, friends, you know, because I feel terrible yeah. doing that. But it was more so, like, oh, I have a conflict. I can mm -hmm. do that one. Yeah. <laughs> but, one, <laughs> but one thing I love is, is that um, listening to this story, you pretty much set your own path, you know? Mm -hmm. You chose not to limit yourself and not to basically oh well it's not the typical black girl track that everybody expects me to play or what I expect myself to play mm -hmm. so I'm gonna go out and go out on a whim see what happens and damn. yeah mm -hmm. and I mean I definitely encourage people to do that like step out of your comfort zone because a lot of times I feel like we go in for the show that we think we're absolutely right for and don't even get a call back and then you go in for a show that you were like not sure if I'm right for mm -hmm. this, or this might be a stretch roll for me. <laughs> um, and then you get a call back all of a sudden because you just yeah. don't know what they're looking for. I'm, I'm not sure. saying go to every single audition. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it's a track about a Jewish white woman. Ca Caucasian is not the correct word for that because not everybody's from the Caucasus Mountains, but anyway. Um, <laughs> The educator in me. Yes, I was like, yeah, <laughs> let them know. Yes. Um, so, um, but mm -hmm. you know, then I mean, that's not your yeah. role. Yeah. But um, unless they're doing very non-traditional casting, mm -hmm. and they say that, and they're mm -hmm. trying to do different things, but 
I mean, you can challenge yourself, and I've also really had fun playing roles that are not me. Mm-hmm. I had a child one time, um, actually this was in San Antonio, after the show, and I came out, and he was asking his mom, he's like, that's the girl who played Grace, right? And I was like, smiling, and he was like, she looks so nice, and his mom was like, oh. his mom was like, oh no, that's just the role that she plays on the <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, yes, I'm so nice, how are you? Because <laughs> Grace is, you know, she's the daughter of Aries, you know, mm-hmm. she's, so I put on a certain persona of her, Absolutely. Um, you know, she does. it's not that she doesn't care, mm-hmm. but at the same time, she likes war, she likes fighting, and, you know, that's what I put on to mm-hmm. play her, mm-hmm. but well I think <laughs> like, I just try to remember to have fun in the audition mm-hmm. space um, because if you're not having fun then they're not really having fun with right. you yeah. and I feel like that's kind of an important quality mm-hmm. so I try to get the music down so much that I feel very confident making choices in the room mm-hmm. with the music so mm-hmm. that way I'm just like living and I'm having a good time. And then the sides I try to be very familiar with, but mm-hmm. very open of to course. their feedback in the room so I'm not like super wedded because I'm like, with yes. the music, you've got to make a choice at a certain point. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's so true because, mm-hmm. you know, I was having this conversation with a friend the other day where it's like, we get so caught up in, oh my God, this is work, and we lose the joy in it. When mm-hmm. we were kids doing this, we weren't worried about, oh my God, I need this job to pay my bills, oh my God, I need this mm-hmm. for whatever reason. It was, I just enjoy singing. Yeah. I just enjoy acting, I just yeah. enjoy dancing. So it's up to us to find that joy in it again mm-hmm. and not put the pressure on, I need this job, yeah. I want this role. Yeah. And, and I think, yeah. even kind of piggybacking off that, what I've been trying, experiencing and trying to incorporate more is like, prioritizing that, prioritizing my enjoyment of the material, Mm -hmm. my enjoyment of the audition first, Mm -hmm. like making that the priority because like, I know for me, a lot of times I can be like accommodating to a fault Mm -hmm. and that can show up in the way of like caring too much about what the people in the room are experiencing to the point where it's like, well, they're not going to experience much that's enjoyable if you're not experiencing much that you're in, into. Mm-hmm. So I've been working towards like really making that the priority. Right. My work and like making sure that I'm actually enjoying what I'm doing in the room a priority. Yeah, and that's even important yeah. like when you're choosing your rep. Like I know it's like we're always thinking like, well, mm-hmm. does this fit this genre? Does this fit this musical? Does mm-hmm. this fit that? And at the end of the day, if you don't enjoy the music that's in your book, like they're not gonna enjoy you in the room either. Like you're not gonna exude confidence because mm-hmm. um, you're just singing that song because you feel like you have to, yeah. or you have to fit a certain niche. Like I always say, I don't ever choose songs that are specifically for one musical because they're so they're so mm-hmm. niche. Like yeah. like rack time, you know. Everybody's always mm-hmm. like, it's like we know rack time, but everybody's like, what do I sing for this? <laughs> <laughs> because it's so it yeah. fits in like a very specific pocket. Yes. Um, and it's like. You know, as long as you get somewhat close, you know, enough to where they can the feel that you part. can, you yeah. can at least sing in the style. It doesn't matter what the background accompaniment really sound mm-hmm. would sound like. But if you sing a song that you really love and enjoy, well, they'll feel that when you're in the room. And you know, for callbacks and things like that, it particularly shows that you. I wasn't very familiar with the Lightning Thief. You know, mm-hmm. I tried to watch videos that had done the. Um, the TYA version with yeah, with theater yeah. works, and which was which was a very about. different, which is. A different version than mm-hmm. what we do in the uh-huh. two-hour version, mm-hmm. yeah. and so I just at least got familiar with how far I could go mm-hmm. with it, mm-hmm. so I could feel that. Um, but then otherwise, I was like, "All right, I'm going to make a choice." Like I, you know, I know what Clarice is by doing the research of who Clarice is from the books, but at the same time, like I'm just going to choose a lane and I'm going to sit in it and I'm going to have fun. But I literally was in that room like. <laughs> like, just having a good time. Yes, and the director literally he's like, shoot, I'm happy you sing the whole show. All right. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but it's because I had fun. I enjoyed yeah. myself. They were laughing. I was laughing at myself. So let's go over um, your, because I. I I want to make sure that everybody understands exactly what the position that you have at the Lightning Thief mm-hmm. is, because with. Understudy, standby, swings, etc. You know, mm-hmm. people who cover a track. Yeah. There's a lot of different titles, mm-hmm. and people don't really understand. So, for you in particular, mm-hmm. what is your title? 
So I, my technical title is <laughs> First Female Understudy for Sally and others and Clarice and others, but that boils down to standby understudy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and that is the same for three of the understudies in our, in our show. Mm -hmm. um, we do have one understudy who is in a performing principal track, so she's the person who plays Clarice and others, and she also understudies um, Annabeth, because we have an uneven number of females in the show. Uh, okay. um, so that is the one piece where she's not a standby understudy, but because mm -hmm. we don't have any ensemble. There's literally no ensemble in our show where everybody's on a principal contract. Okay. So that's why you see the billing together where it'll uh -huh. say like nice. Chris McCarroll with yeah. Everybody, so we're all built together. Okay. Yes. yes. Nice. Mm -hmm. okay. And swings cover ensemble tracks. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Then you have, so there's on stage understudies who are usually ensemble members who understudy principal tracks. Correct. You have swings who are off stage understudies who usually understudy a ensemble track and may cover a principal mm -hmm. track. Correct. Mm -hmm. One to be a swing technically you have to cover four or more ensemble tracks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because mm -hmm. in my swing days I had to cover eight. Yes. Eight. Come on, eight tracks. Four, <laughs> eight. That's four male and four female. <gasps> Yes, honey. <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. um, then we have off-stage stem principal standby. Yes. Which is like you're covering a principal track. That's just your job. Yes. Mm -hmm. And off-stage can also a lot of times be singing vocals. Mm -hmm. um, I know they did that for some of like Donna Summer, yeah. um, particularly like your your shows where there's a lot of vocals mm -hmm. and it's really you know tough to get through so a lot of times you'll have like off stage and they'll sing you the pit singers yeah. you know those types of things mm -hmm. but you know definitely as a standby or even a, a swing role it's like you are there at the theater in case something happens like you can get called on at any time of, of course. course and um you just have to be ready to go and actually that happened on tour where i got called on mid-show i got it Got a text about mm -hmm. 20 minutes mm -hmm. into the first act, and it said, please get ready for Clarice and others, because you will probably be going on for the second act. And I was oh like, my okay. God. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Hey, people have won Tony Awards that way. Yeah. So. <laughs> Being ready. Yes, ready. and I hadn't done it in like a month and a half, and I was like, all right, let's see what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like because it's nerve wracking though. You're like, ah! it's like riding a bike though. You know, once you get back on the wheels and they start going, mm -hmm. just keep flying. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, I have a question, mm -hmm. and this may be this may be more pertinent to your initial rehearsal process rather than the Broadway rehearsal process. Mm -hmm. um, so, just real short. <laughs> So, when you're in rehearsal and you are um, coming in with mainly um, being off stage, mm -hmm. so you're in rehearsals just taking notes. Do you ever get a pass during rehearsals? Um, or not, not until like understudy rehearsals start? Well, one of the things is, yeah, so yes, you are usually like taking notes. Mm -hmm. um, there really depends like sometimes like particularly if you're in rehearsals in, in New York you know mm -hmm. people still have their lives yes it's so it's if an actor gets excused because they need to go get their hair done before we go on tour because it's certain specific or they have a mm -hmm. doctor's appointment yeah. that they have to fit in or something like that then you can go in while they're away yes so that definitely happened with me like um, I think mainly for Sarah Beth I'm trying to remember if it happened for my Sally track um, but there were a couple appointments that she had to go to, mm -hmm. or like if they have to go to a fitting. Yes. Um, yes which course, was yeah. at our producer's office mm -hmm. and not in the Theater Works studios. Yeah. Um, so then I got to step in and do that track, which is sometimes nerve wracking because if you're not anticipating it, you're like, mm -hmm. Ooh, how yes. actually prepped am I for uh -huh. this? <laughs> Um, and have I been paying enough attention? Uh, but the other thing is it's great because then you've got to get a feel for things. Mm -hmm. And it helps because then you're actually getting to work with the director and the choreographer mm -hmm. and everything and they can kind of see your work. Yeah. Um, and also, one thing happened is Sarah Beth's voice went out during our process and actually right when we were doing the Sitzprobe, mm -hmm. I worked in Germany so I tried to say it semi-properly. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the friends in Germany. Come on. <laughs> 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 um, 
Um, but um, so what ended up happening? We called it me aeroling um, yes. for for um, Sarah Beth. So she ran because we had a run through of the show. Okay. So she ran through physically the entire show, and I voiced her uh, the entire time. So I'm in the corner voice, you know, voicing her. Yeah. And then I also got to sing the Sids Brover, which was great because she knows the show. Yes. She did the run at the Lortel, mm -hmm. and for me, it was great to hear the music because yeah. I didn't know what all of the music was. You've been hearing the piano. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no! oh, yes, so She's also was, my favorite princess. Oh yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so it can happen. It can mm -hmm. happen that way. Um, and that happened for the other understudies too. People had like little appointments they needed to go to, and, yeah. and then that's nice because then you can kind of just at least walk through certain yeah. certain steps. So that's the other thing. It's just because you're sitting in a corner doesn't mean you should not be paying attention. That's very true. Very you can very even in that get called on at any point. Yeah. And we had an injury during previews, and mm -hmm. we hadn't even had a single understudy rehearsal during, at that point. Mm -hmm. And so it was it was one of those to where, is Sarah Beth going to have to go on for Anna Beth, and am I going to have to go on for, for Clarice never having a rehearsal? So you always have to be as prepared as you as can you. be yourself. Like, that's basically what you're getting paid to do, is to prep yourself. Yes. And yes. I feel it speaks volumes of your character, because... Like you said, it's so easy to be that person. Oh, I ain't got to worry about it. They're not going to rehearse us until, you know, weeks after previews. I'm just going to sit here, find my nails, play on my phone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll learn what I got to learn when they tell me to learn it. But I'm just going to sit here and watch her and not do anything. Mm -hmm. But then it could literally be, okay, well, I know it's day two, but we need you to step in for the first half hour or mm -hmm. the first hour of rehearsals until she gets here. Uh, and then you look, you look yeah. <laughs> you never know, somebody could be stuck on the subway underground yeah. and yeah. they're running late and that and that can happen and they're like okay can yeah. you stand in yeah. until they get here yeah. and that that is a very true statement because they're not going to stop the rehearsal process they're spending money on no. studio time to be able to rehearse the actors they're not just going to stop just to wait for um uh, uh I'm sorry, um, they're not going to wait for her to get off the subway yeah. just to start the process mm -hmm. for everybody. They're going to be like, okay, we have somebody who, who is studying the track. Mm -hmm. They need to be in place mm -hmm. of her while we wait. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, of course, if it's a day two, they don't expect you to be off book. Yeah. But at the same time, <laughs> it's like you need to at least know if they went through blocking, well, you should know what that is. Yes. Um, at least have the notes written down. So. Yeah, <laughs> go up there with your book. <laughs> like, this is what I'm supposed to do, right? Mm -hmm. oh, right, yes. you know, walk yes. through it as much as you know, so that way they know, well, okay, I'm paying them to be in the corner to do this. Yes. <laughs> 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 Build healthy relationships yes, about why they hire exactly. you. Yes. <laughs> absolutely, <Yeah>. absolutely. <laughs> okay, so you open on the 16th. Yes. Mm -hmm. of October. Mm -hmm. Do you know what you are wearing? I do not. Okay. Um, I did go to Render Runway. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they didn't have a really great selection yet. Oh. They have they don't have their holiday stuff okay. yet for when people get all their holiday dresses yeah. and, and things. I mean, I have stuff in my closet, mm -hmm. but I feel like I just want to rent something real quick. I get it, yeah. Um, I don't want to buy anything because yeah. it's New York. I don't want yeah. anything else in my closet. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Um, yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to do a full length number because I don't feel like it fits with our show, mm -hmm. even though it's kind of like black tie and mm -hmm. um, also the venue for our opening, mm -hmm. I think dictates to be able to move around. Yes. So she'll probably be a cocktail, a high low, or a tea link. All right. Something. I'm okay. seeing something goddess like. And even in your name, because when, when I first heard your name, I was like, she has the name of a goddess. Oh, so, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I think, I think use that as inspiration for, for your look. I also design as well. So. <laughs> well maybe we need to Sh chat. work together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shameless plug. <laughs> Action. Here on Take the Stairs. <laughs> yes. I mean, I have a f I uh -huh. definitely to wear shoes that are in my closet. Of so course. I have. Mm -hmm. I do have some um, Betsy Johnson like super like st like studded um, shoes that are yes. completely bedazzled. Mm -hmm. um, so I may wear those. So I may like do a notch of shoes. Mm -hmm. I have these other like fuchsia satin ones, which mm -hmm. are really cool too. Mm -hmm. That's a good color. Yeah, and it's so. a good color for your complexion too. Thank you. Like it's here in the earrings you got on. So mm -hmm. it's, I'm like I totally see it. Yeah, yeah. I love <laughs> color, so it'll probably. 
hopefully it'll involve color of some mm -hmm. sort, mm -hmm. um, just because I, I like a pop or something. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. be festive. Come on. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the typical, like, all black New York. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, no, no. No. One of the things I was mentioning um, was, so our show is very diversely cast, and it doesn't stick to the book of how each character was described in the book. Um, so you have Sally, who is the mom, and whether it's Jaylin going in every day or me going in to cover her, we're both black or of African descent. Um, and Percy is white, whether it is Chris or whether it is Sam going in to cover him. And you just believe this black mom had this white child. <laughs> um, and so, um, you know, in, in a sense, I feel like our industry, particularly with our traditional music, um, musicals, um, you know, Carousel when it came out to Broadway, we were talking about The Music Man, and um, we're talking about The Little Mermaid, and how that's being cast, and, you know, we're getting to this place where we're not traditionally casting certain roles the way that we have traditionally seen them, or just casting something like Gretchen and Mean Girls. Um, yes. Casting something that was specifically in a movie the way they will on stage the same, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, waitress, you know, diversifying the three main female characters. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I think that's really important that we see ourselves in these characters just because it's, that fits my personality or I feel like I can play that persona very well versus mm -hmm. I go out for Newsies and I specifically go for Meta because that's like the one black female character in the show. Yeah. You know the show, um, it's actually a show that made me want to get into musical theater. But the reason I fell in love with it was because I could watch many productions of it. This is when YouTube first came out and I was still in high school. <laughs> um, I could watch different videos and productions of it and every character could be whatever they decided to cast it as at the time. Rent. Right. Mm -hmm. you, had, yeah. you had Latinos, black people, Asians playing all or whatever their ethnicity was, playing all the different characters at different times. And that was when I said to myself, oh my God, I don't know which one. Like, I literally was like, which one do I want to be? Yeah. <laughs> and like, of course, me, Mimi was my favorite character. And I literally can say, I probably have, I've seen a Jewish Mimi, I've seen a Latina Mimi, I've seen a mixed Mimi, I've seen a black Mimi, I've seen a West Indian Mimi, I've seen this and that and so on and so forth and not just for her but for every other character mm -hmm. and it was literally like oh my god like there's no limit to this like it's literally it literally was whoever fits the track best at that time will end up getting the role yeah. and to me that was one of the reasons I decided to pursue this as a career because I really liked that aspect of it then a few years later when the Little Mermaid um, came out and like you had Norm Lewis playing Sierra Bacchus' father, and then you had all the sisters were a mixed bag of whatever, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I thought that that was so great. And I think at that time there was so much, and of course there was a certain level of it, but we have, we still have so much further to go. Yes, we do. Um, and I love that like now they're starting to step out of the realm of, oh, okay, you know, we're only gonna do it this far. Now they're taking it as far as it's saying, okay, we're now, being um, gender, we're not being so gender specific either. So they're allowing our trans brothers and sisters to play certain roles. Um, they're allowing, you know, or even specifically asking for yes. that. Now. Yeah. You see that even yes. more in breakdowns, like non-binary, no, transgender, I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, I love so. it. Male identified, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or female identified. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I think I think that's a great step in the right direction. Um, even with um, what they did with um, Frozen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where the original Olaf mm -hmm. was a male, but then they had Ryan Redman, who is female, mm -hmm. come in and take over the she role. She is brilliant, I saw her. <laughs> I was like, yes! yes. Living her best oh, life. Oh yeah, Ryan, Ryan's great. She's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think, I think that's a, like, I feel like, realistically, the limitations are only what we place on it. So it's up to us to break that cycle and say, we're not just going to stay in the same lane, the same realm mm -hmm. that we felt that we needed to be in all of these years. Yeah, and if mm -hmm. you don't go in for it, yeah. then they, you know, who are they considering? They're always gonna consider 
who's there to be considered for the role, but if you also don't go in and you don't express like, hey, I'm, I'm very interested in this role or this type or anything like that and breaking the mold of how you've been boxed, then you it's harder also for them to even look at that when there's nothing for them to look at except for the, you know, very similar um, type of person. So I think it's also the challenge of us going in with that as well, particularly with like the traditional stuff where yeah. it was cast very differently because of the time period. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't mean, because I always find like the one black female and that has a more jazz standardy type of, you know, role or song or anything like that. And so we will tend to go in with that type of music yeah. versus just saying, I'm gonna go in with the straight up traditional music theater and I'm gonna say, hey, I wanna play the female lead. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sometimes it takes that. Yeah. There was a quote that I gave to a friend of mine a week ago. Um, we, at some point, have to take responsibility for our own suffering. Mm -hmm. So if we're saying that we want something and we're not even going out to get it or we're not allowing ourselves to have it, that's on us. Because mm -hmm. we, can we, we can't give other people the control. Mm -hmm. We don't understand that directors are the ones in charge, are the ones doing this, casting, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, we're the ones who are saying, no, I am right for this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and then I think even going in like, okay, so there was one audition I went in for Fireside for Grease, and I went in thinking like, okay, which roles have like black women played in regional theater? And so I went in with a very specific thought process, and then all of a sudden, Ed asked me, he was like, so which role were you thinking? And I was like, oh, I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So what just came to my mind was, you know, Marty or, or Frenchie, mm -hmm. and, um, right. you know, for me, Frenchie was a stretch anyway, but I'm like, I feel like I could play her personality, but she's always listed as, like, a very thin Italian woman, and I'm medium. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so, and he was like, go get the Rizzo sides, and I was like, okay, great. Well, there we go. And then I, and then later I was like, why didn't I say Sandy? Because I was not mm -hmm. prepared for the question. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I could, I always have seen myself as somebody who could play Sandy, but I've never had anybody just even ask me flat out, who mm -hmm. were you thinking? And so I shot myself in the foot by not even just saying Sandy. Luckily, he didn't put me necessarily in the Marty track and put me in the, the Italian woman one, which was still <laughs> not my usual type, which yeah. is, which is super, which is fine. But at the same time, I didn't even put myself in the Sandy track because I didn't think yes. that somebody would be open to that. And mm -hmm. I know even with Iberton, because um, um, we have a mutual friend, yes, <laughs> who, yes, was, yes, yes. who was, um, or friends actually, I have two friends who were in mm -hmm. that um, show. And the Sandy for that one at Iberton in Connecticut was a Pan-Asian or Asian Pacific Islander mm -hmm. descent. And I know that they got some questions from patrons about, well, isn't Sandy supposed to be blonde? And it's like, well, that's that's because of who played it in the movie again, the movie version yes. <laughs> to stage. Yeah. Um, and it's like, well, really, all she needs to be is Australian. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you could do a nice little cute accent. Australian accent, then it really yeah. doesn't matter. There are definitely Asians in Australia. Yes. So. Oh, well, and there are also indigenous mm -hmm. people yes, in Australia yeah. too. So um, you know, I think that's where you know society will also pigeonhole it but then we all again mm -hmm. we also do it to ourselves sometimes and yeah, i can yes. own that i've done that mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um wow it's really <laughs> that really took me back when you just yeah. said that because <laughs> i've experienced i've seen and experienced that like for instance and since we've been speaking about it we might as well bring up that whole little mermaid situation that happened over the summer yes. how mm -hmm. uh, hallie bailey got cast in the role of ariel she is a beautiful woman of color and not everyone but a, a large sum of people were enraged because she was not a natural white-skinned euro euro descent redhead with blue eyes mm -hmm. and the defense of the people was is that yeah that's what you're used to but they cast her for a reason. Mm -hmm. If you listen to this girl's voice, she sounds like Ariel. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna, I, I know for a fact she's gonna do great. Like, I'm, I'm glad that they decided to be like, we're gonna do something different with this. Right. And 
everybody's so used to seeing that blue-eyed, red-headed, white version of Ariel. Mm -hmm. I think that it's going to be interesting to see what they allow themselves to do with this particular movie version yeah. that's coming out either next year or the year after. I know I'll be front row. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so true because it's like, like, and we don't know what they're planning to do with the rest of the casting right now. Her father could end up being a white man, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Ursula, who's supposed to be our aunt, right now they're talking to Melissa McCarthy for playing the role. That's a white woman. They could, and all of her sisters could literally be whatever they decide to be. So there's so many different ways they can go about it. And, you know, let the work be, speak for itself. If there's yes, nothing that yes, is specifically yes. saying this character needs to be white, this character needs to be black, this character needs to be Asian, this character needs to be whatever this character is supposed to be, as long as they stay true and they to the material and they stay true to the character and bring that character to genuine life, and that's all that matters. It doesn't matter all the other stuff. Right. So Absolutely. blonde hair, blue eyes, black skin, curly hair, kinky hair, that that's not important unless it's specific to the story. Yeah. Well, there yeah. also, I mean, I think people also have a misjudgment about ethnicity and race mm -hmm. and genealogy and even how it works. It's like, I mean, there are plenty of black women who have naturally red hair. I'm like, if you, I mean, honestly, if you lift color out of my hair, it goes red. That's yeah. why whenever I do color it, I just color it, and it's ginger red. I mm. tell you, I've tried to color my hair this color, <laughs> and it just washes out, and it becomes ginger, so I just stay in the ginger family, because mm -hmm. that's actually the lifting of my hair goes ginger, mm. and that's within my own genealogy, um, but at the same time, but again, it should not matter. Should not matter. <laughs> 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 She's supposed to represent the Red Sea, <laughs> so, um, but at the same time, it's it's just like you know people's knowledge of how genealogy even works is is very skewed sometimes, and we also just don't have an understanding of that and how that could even be feasible. It's like even if you were trying to represent something mm -hmm. from an authentic standpoint mm -hmm. and, and that mattered in the situation mm -hmm. um, it's also that is also should be should be something that should be taken into account as well is that it may not necessarily work the way that you think or you've been taught that it works because genealogy works in a lot of different ways it yes. really does because yes. they're, they're we all got a whole lot in us hey <laughs> <laughs> we do absolutely like we we've been on this planet for millions of years there's you can't tell us that there's not a little bit of everything mixed into the pot of soup mm -hmm. i mean i'm 10 percent yeah. northern european and eight percent mediterranean and three percent southwest asian yes <laughs> <laughs> hello everyone Thank you so much for watching. Um, we did have some technical difficulties with the last five minutes of the episode, and they were lost. <laughs> so here I am to just kind of close things out. We do want to thank T. Siobhan for coming onto the blog and spending some time with us, and we were so glad to get to know her a little bit better. Um, her information, if you want to follow her on the Instagram and all of that fun stuff, her handle is at Chosen Melody. Her handle and her website information is definitely going to be down below in the description box. My information and Marcus's information are going to be down below as well. As usual, you know where to find us. Um, I did also want to shout out one of our former special guests, Miss Danielle Fulton, who is starring off-Broadway in Broadbent, Arkansas right now. And that's got the Duke Theater. They open, I believe, November 10th. Don't quote me on that. I believe it's November 10th. But Danielle is an amazing talent. I don't think New York is ready for her. I think she's going to do amazing things. And I can't wait to see it. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching. Please like. Please share. Please subscribe. And please let me know if there's other types of content that you want to see me or the two of us doing. So let me know down below. All that fun stuff. Thanks for watching, and it's weird to do this without Marcus, but I guess I have to now since this is the end of the episode. The elevator to success is broken. You must take the stairs.